feel really bad for men that they can't experience the, the, the feeling of motherhood. The feeling when you give birth and you look at your baby in the eyes for the first time is the, the highest form of love there is possible. I think it's so much further than you would ever expect. I think that's the closest you can get to seeing God. I am a mother, first and foremost. I am an actress, and I am a wife. I am a... I feel like I'm all the things now that I've signed up for the role of motherhood. <laughs> I'm a cook, I'm a driver, I'm all the things, but uh, professionally I'm an actress, yes. It was the happiest time of my life. Like I remember telling my husband, him coming home, and I like I didn't even make it this grand announcement. I just hand, I just handed him the pregnancy test and he just like I could see the look of like every emotion in his eyes. He was so just like oh, this is happening and okay, we're going to do this. But like are we sure? But like we're doing this. We have no option, but we're doing this, right? Like Okay, like let's go. When you go through this experience together, you leave there and it's like you both have entered this portal and you see things differently. And you're, I, I remember looking at my husband, we, were, we got in the car from the hospital to drive home and we're like half a mile from the hospital. And we strapped him in really tight and you know, just made sure he was safe and we, we all get in the car and I'm like settled and I'm like okay. We can do this, we can go half a mile. <laughs> Don't crash the car. And I look at him in the rear view mirror and I'm like, we both take a deep breath and I'm like, do you feel that? Like, do you see that? He was like, yeah. And I was like, everything is different now. Like how is the whole world, how, how are they just going on about life? It took me about a year, I think, to just to really process everything. You, you come home from the hospital and you hit the ground running and sleepless nights, you're wearing diapers, you're bleeding nonstop, you are, you know, a baby in your own right, you're having to take care of your own self. And then you go on to the next thing, okay, breastfeeding, and, and hopefully that goes well for you. That's a whole process in itself. And then my sisters told me, they said, Six days after you um, deliver, there's gonna be a big surprise for you. And just buckle up. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, you are going to feel every emotion. That high that you experienced in birth will come down. You will have a moment where you will cry and just feel it. And it was like clockwork. Six days in, I felt it and it lasted like three days and it rocked my world. It's like one thing after another. And before you know it, you wake up six months in and you're like, how do I have a six month old? I feel like I've been just, I'm coming up for air now. Yum. Can I have a bite? Can I have one? Mmm. Cheers. What do you think is not spoken about enough? How? How? How lonely it can be to to be a mother. How lonely it can be. It's like there's a nod when you when you see another woman who's doing it. 
you're like, how you doing? You know, because it's just a very, um, only moms get it, you know? Playing an, a trumpet going. Let's see, where's the ball? Well, take this off. <laughs> it's heartbreaking to me how many women out there who don't have a support system to talk to about what it is that they're going through because there's just so much. There's so much that you process in the midst of it. There's this pressure constantly of needing to be everything and all things at once. And just so many women out there are hanging on by a thread. The first thing that I see when I see a mom and a baby, I, I acknowledge the baby, of course, but like I go straight to the mom. I'm like, how are you doing? What are you feeling? You know, it is like, you just need people to see you. I had left the entertainment business, so I didn't want to have anything to do with it. I was done. And I, something happened when I was six months in, when I was telling you how all those emotions came up, I needed to process them. So I got back into class. It, reinvigorated that dream. It, it, it really helped me find my purpose again. I missed it. I missed the art of it. I missed working. I missed my identity. Like I felt like that was a huge part of me. I do that once a week, but right now I'm just about to start auditioning again and it's terrifying because I have now a 15 month old who's gonna be along for the ride. And is that fair to him? There's so many women out there who are sacrificing. That is just what you sign up for. And I really had to retrain my whole mentality around sacrifice. You know, you, you welcome guilt and shame when you do that. And um, I'm just, I'm just not gonna be that story. I just want to, be the best mom I can be, be as present I can be. But when he is 16 years old, I want him to look at me and say, I'm proud of you for the decisions that you made. Describe him in as many or in as little words as you want. Oh my god. Ugh. Mm. I will cry. He is. He came through and came out into this world bigger and brighter than any soul I've ever, ever known. And he is just so sure of himself. He is so aligned you know he's like he's on a mission like he knows what he wants in his life you can tell and he's like my biggest inspiration already 15 months in I'm like wow like it just turns the mirror back on you and you're like wow this is this is how it's supposed to be you know you, you know you have a a baby that you want to protect from the world because they're just so pure and so innocent and I feel like for me, like I don't have to worry about him. Like he just, he is who he is and there's no changing that. And it in turn reminds me that there is no changing me. 
Like, I have a duty to protect that. I have a duty to protect myself. And he's just inspired me in so many ways. It's just, you know, the biggest honor being his mother. <clears throat> so, I'm Stacy McCarter, and I absolutely love children, and I'm a teacher, so I think that goes together. <laughs> and I have three amazing children, all very gifted in different areas, and that's me. I need a drama when my coworker was like, no, you're pregnant. You should take a pregnancy test. I was like, no, that's silly. What a waste of money. And she was like, no, girl, take that test. And I took it and I just was like, oh my goodness. And I even saved the stick because I was just, I was just like, this is unbelievable. People would give me stuff and I would have to take the bus and the train home and I would just carry it and I was, I would build every day, every week with the things that I had to make a life for me and this child. And it, it was hard, but it was worth it. You know, the most rewarding part of raising my children is just seeing them be themselves. We put so much into our children. We tell them to do this or don't do that. And we try to show them the best life and give them the best experience and to be this image of what we think they should be. But the best part is when they show us who they are. No, I want to kiss. No. But I remember the times where I wasn't a single mom. And even though my marriage wasn't perfect or it wasn't ideal or in a way that I thought it would be as a mother with children and married, I knew somebody was there so that I could go to sleep or I could, you know, lock myself in the bathroom, you know, or whatever, just to have a break or just have fresh air or just to have a time where I need to get my thoughts together, get my mind together or deal with the situation without having to break down in front of my children. Whoa. As a single mother, you don't really get a break. Because even when they're sleeping, you're like, did I check all the doors? Do the smoke detectors work? Um, is my door open for them if they cry and have a bad dream? You know, my son, he has nosebleeds all the time. So my door is always open. I'm always listening. You know, oh, did they get up to go to the bathroom? Did they trip and fall over something? You know, um, are they thirsty? This or that. And as they get older, you have less of those worries, but you still are listening and attentive and focused on the next thing, do I have lunch in the refrigerator for tomorrow? Do they have their clarinet because it's Tuesday and it's clarinet practice? And do they have their glasses on because they have a stigma and they need their glasses on? You know, it's, it's constant on the go. For a moment, I thought it was too late for me, but I had this amazing opportunity and I could be a student, a student that I always wanted to be. And, and, and I got to dive into the college experience. And who would have ever thought, I have three children, single mother, that I could experience that, but I did. You know, just hearing you talk about your story, single mom, working, doing this program, raising three children. When you got that degree, what did that whole experience, that whole roller coaster of a chapter, what did that, you know, teach you about yourself? Every voice that ever told me that I wasn't going to make it. Every job that fired me every person that closed doors, every heartache, every heartbreak, every sacrifice, all the sleepless nights, all the I'm exhausted getting, going to class and 
all this studying so hard and not doing so well, but then having opportunities to retake tests. And it just was like a light bulb. It was like working so hard and finally the light is on. Finally, you have arrived. Like it just, it means so much to me. And it means so much that my children see that like with hard work, perseverance, a dedicated community, people who are open and listening and respectful and having difficult conversations with you, learning and growing with you, supporting you, like you can do this. What's the next chapter look like? The next chapter definitely looks like teacher. <laughs> Here I am, Miss McCarter, live in the flesh. Come on in. <laughs> I also want to go back to school and get my master's. I'm not for sure how or when, but I know something will work out. I really feel like being a single mother, it does make you a superhero. It makes you stronger. It makes you more employable. It makes you more of a manager. Um, like there's so many skills of being a mother, a single mother that just impacts your life in such incredible ways. It just helps you so much. Although I, I want them to have a two parent home. If that is not where we are right now, that's okay. Because there are lots of benefits for us to be who we are now. So you have to, you know, see the good in all of it. And the good that I see is that it has made me stronger as a person, as a mother, as a sibling, as an employee, um, as a teacher, as a friend, as a neighbor. My senses are heightened and I'm more aware and visual and I work harder. It's not this cookie cut, perfect, this is the motherhood. This is what motherhood looks like. It's not, you know, what we see on reality TVs. It's what's next door. It's what is in line in front of you at the grocery store or in line in front of you at McDonald's or at the movie theater or walking down the street. This is our reality. This is motherhood. Okay, bye. I love you. Your child. <laughs> um, if it's not a construction truck, it's a dog. If it's not a dog, it's the TV. If it's not a TV, it's one of my kids. Yeah. <laughs> or it's me. <laughs> Welcome to motherhood. <laughs> Do you need a stool, buddy? This is fine. Oh, that's fine. Okay, at least it's make it fun, right? I'm Paula Ferris. I am a mom of three, married to my college sweetheart. In a former life, I anchored Good Morning America Weekend and I co-hosted The View. And I kind of blew my life up during the pandemic and moved to a small rural town in South Carolina, which is where we live now. I never had grandiose dreams about becoming a mother. I mean, there are so many things I wanted to do with my life and kids annoyed me until I had my own. And now I love kids, not, not just my own. So it definitely changes you. And, you know, and then I had grandiose ideas of what kind of mom I was going to be. I was going to homeschool and I was going to make all their own food and that didn't happen. Okay. So it's just about like having realistic expectations and giving yourself grace to change your mind. One of the most life-changing moments for me was when I held my daughter for the first time. My oldest, and everyone said, oh, it's gonna change. And you're like, yeah, it's gonna change. And then you hold this baby and you're like, I never imagined it. Like, what just happened to my heart? Like, I, I was, I tell my daughter, I'm like, you are the moment that changed everything for me. You know, my husband and I look at them and we're like, it's just, I can't believe, it. they're such a miracle. Kids are such a miracle and moms are such a miracle. I think like we can grow humans in our bodies. You know, we can grow toes and eyes and feet and it like, we're badasses, okay? Mothers are badasses. Hey boys, what are you up to? You did? Did daddy help you? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Can I get you 
some water? You, you have a water bottle upstairs. You know that I love to bring you really inspirational stories about what people are called to do and who they're called to be. And I first met my guest at the White House Correspondents' Dinner in DC, probably like 10 years ago. In this conversation, I'm gonna explain the fun story behind that. I was like, what can I call this company? And I was trying to think of like everyday words that we use and I'm like, carry. Hmm, we carry children, we carry one another, we carry each other's burdens, carry. So that's like where the, the genesis of the name carry. We wanna help carry mothers through these pivotal moments. We wanna help carry working moms. We have a newsletter for carry that goes out every Sunday. It's a weekly newsletter for working moms for working moms by working moms and I have to get my edits in so I need to do that like right now thank you Elise from Pilot Radio Carrie Mothers to take the burden of parenting responsibility thank you you know there's this expectation once you have a kid um, that you're going to leave the workforce and that really happens and it's like pick one kids or career can't have them both I certainly you can't have them both at the same time right and I'm like yeah, that's true, but why is that true, right? Do we tell dads you can't be a dad and you can't have a career? And so much of that is because the workplace doesn't work for mothers, we're not celebrated, we're scrutinized. And also, most of the labor, unpaid labor, outside of work at the home falls on mothers. Once you become a mother, you, you miss out on promotions, you're actually paid less, we're paid about 70 cents on the dollar compared to fathers. We're paid less than women who don't have children, that's the mother punishment. And then compounded with that, that's the, you know, the, the gender pay disparity in general where women make less than men to begin with. We're not at the decision-making tables. Like there are so many things um, that are stacked up against us as mothers, but then you compound that with moms in the workplace. And I just want to change the game for moms, especially working moms. hoping will change. This would be ideal for me. Mothers are celebrated instead of scrutinized in the workplace and no longer are we forced to choose between kids and career. That becoming a mother is actually seen as an asset instead of a liability. That would be, that would be the big win. We're gonna slate. Oh my god, it's getting slated. It's starting. So I guess if we could sort of rewind back to the beginning, I want to talk about because I feel like this is something that like I've never discussed with you before. I've never really discussed with any family members before. Your journey into motherhood, how did that begin? If you want to sort of just walk me through when you first found out you were pregnant. Okay, well, let me take you back further. My husband, Mike, and myself, um, that was one thing that we had in common. Like, we wanted kids. We, we both wanted kids. And when we got married, we decided that we didn't want to wait. Like, it wasn't like, oh, let's wait until we get a bigger house, or let's wait until we get better jobs, or let's, like, we didn't want to wait. We wanted to start immediately. So that was easy. I mean, I got pregnant immediately. <laughs> you know what I mean? As soon as we said, oh, let's try, boom, I got pregnant. So that journey in and of itself was... Um, like uneventful. The only thing I can tell you is um, I gained 68 pounds. Like I couldn't fit into booths. Like we, like we laughed, you know. That was and it, and when I think about back then, it was such a good time. Like it was such a good time. It's okay. Take your time. And and I had a normal pregnancy. A normal delivery. My Michael was nine pounds, 14 ounces, and he was 21 inches long. So he was like a big baby. And, and somewhere in my head, I thank God for him being big. Um, and, and we took him home. We, it, it was normal. 
normal for three months and then it wasn't normal. Obviously, I know what terminal means, but I just never, ever associated it with my son. I just couldn't. Like, you just couldn't go there. There were certain places in your head, in your heart, in your mind that you just can't go. And that was one of them. I just never could go there, ever. The nurse said to me, she said, if you're crying, you can't go in. She wouldn't let us in. So I had to suck it up. And I never cried again in front of them. She said to us, she said to me, your son feeds off of you. He doesn't know anything else but what you know. So I remember I thought, oh my God, I had to grab hold of myself. And I, went, then I looked at everybody else and I said, that's it. Like, you cannot cry. No one's allowed to cry in front of them. You have to grab hold of yourself. We have to be strong. And that was it. So I remember... I didn't cry. Oh my God, I'm crying now like to beat the band, but you couldn't cry. And we didn't like, and we just took turns going in and, and just sitting there. I think we just held his hand because you couldn't hold him. And they had him so doped up and he just laid there. He was so little, he was still three and a half months old. We finally found the right medicine. And he also did two years of chemo. And I had to learn how to give a shot. Dear God, <laughs> you know, it was just, um, they were scary hard times. Him walking, him talking, him feeding himself, him eating solid food. I mean, they were all struggles that we had, but it didn't matter. Like struggles didn't matter because we had them. So it wasn't, it, it didn't become big deals. When you hear people talk today, it's always like, well, I, I started potty training my child at like one and a half, or I started, my child started, and I thought, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Those things don't matter. What matters is that you have your child. What matters is that your child's healthy. My mother always said she loved when her kids were five or six years old. She knew where they were. They were at home. They were watching TV. You'd go to bed at 8 or 9 o'clock, and it was just a happy time. See, my son's still about 5. Although he's 25 in age, mentally he's still 5. So I still have Santa Claus. I'll have Santa Claus for the rest of my life. He'll have Santa Claus. The Easter Bunny. The simple things. Like, he likes to come home and sit on a rocker with his mom. You know, like, so they're the good things. You're such a good boy. You are such a good boy. Everybody should be more like you. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Dad. <laughs> when I look at him, he's like a ray of sunshine. He, he, he really seriously, like, he's happy. So you try, so that, that's catchy. So I'm happy. You know, if, um, if he does something funny, I don't know, if he does something that's not right, like I said, he said a bad word. Well, I can't get mad at him. Like, I'm over in the corner, I'm laughing, trying to say, oh, what'd you say? So I could hear it again. You know, for some odd reason, it's funny coming out of his mouth. Um, I just, I, I think you just, you can't be, you can't, you cannot be too serious about anything. I think we look to find the funny or the good. And I think that's what he's taught me about being a mom. But I think you and Uncle Mike and, and Michael, just I, I personally just think the way you live your lives and, and you especially as a woman, as my aunt, is my one of my maternal Yay! role models. I never I see it. you or hear you complain ever. I don't think I ever have. Um, and I just think you have this, this wonderful just passion for just living every day together as, as this family unit. Was that 
a big takeaway, that outlook on life, was that a big takeaway, do you think? I think so. I think so, because once you have something and you're afraid you're going to lose it. You know, I know it's 25 years out, but you just never know. You just never know, you know? And I think that is, um, you're right, we're always together. <laughs> I said, I thought, oh my God, we are. Uh, we genuinely like being together. That's the first thing we do. We genuinely like being together. Um, but no, our, our Michael is our everything. I can tell you that. He really is. Mm-hmm. In your perspective, has there been a, you know, a mother in your life or a maternal figure that you have, you know, personally really taken something away from and they've shaped you and, and who you are today as a mom? You know, Catherine, I did think about that. I thought about that. I thought my mother, and she just passed away in February, so I'm going to try to keep it in perspective. My mother, I, I talked to my mother two to three times every day. I was with my mother. My mother was like my best friend, seriously. And I and then I thought back to my mother-in-law, and I thought back. To, these women were similar in the sense where they both had uh, a lot of not a lot. I guess a lot for somebody who only has one. My mother-in-law had five. My mother had four. But these women were hardworking women, and I thought they their kids were taken care of. Their kids got educated. They made sure there was supper on the table. They made sure the clothes were cleaned. They ironed. My mother used to carry wash from the, from the basement to the top floor to hang it out on a line. And I thought, these women were just, I don't know, they were hardworking, loving women. And I thought, no, that's what helped to shape me. My mother, when I look at my mother-in-law, I look at both these women and I think, my God, because they didn't always have it easy. I know that. And I wonder sometimes if they had somebody to talk to, you know? And I think, no, oh, these women, yeah, they taught me to be strong. They showed, they showed you how to be strong.